Today you see a beautiful feet and flare dress but it's a little different because it's got princess seams front and back for neat fabrics and the collar is amazing, it's a short collar. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and I'm super excited to share a dress today that has a feature that's a little different to one you would typically see with with neat dresses. Making a comfortable dress with neat fabrics doesn't mean it has to be a really simple style. And what I like the most about the new Delta dress from Sinclair Patterns is a beautiful short collar. I love that, it's just different, something you don't see all the time. And then you have the classic sort of fit that I think a lot of people like, which is the fit and flare. It means the bodice is nice and fitted. And the bodice is made of a few pieces. There are princess seams that come from the shoulders front and back and I think the fit is amazing because of that. The skirt under the bodice is A-line, it's really simple, just a front and a back cut on the fold, just the right amount of volume that I'm comfortable with. The skirt can be at the knee or below the knee, those are the two lengths there in the pattern. Other than making this a dress, you could also make it a peplum top and then you have a separate skirt piece for the front that will sort of overlap and close with a button so it will be like a wrap top, a real wrap top that will close with a button. So it's a little different to the dress because with the dress the skirt will just be one piece piece on the front making the bodice a fake wrap bodice. For sleeves you can make it sleeveless, there is a binding piece in the pattern or the sleeve piece has actually lots of cut lines and hem lines there, you know short, elbow, three quarters, long, whatever you want. The options are there and apart from all the options in the pattern you have a bunch more options because the armhole is designed to fit an iron pack full of sleeves that Sinclair Patterns has. Lots and lots of different neat types of sleeves that will fit many of the patterns and this is one of the patterns that they will work with and there's also a skirt add-on pack that has a lot of different types of skirts that you can add on to this bodice if you want. So if you have those add-on packs you can mix and match and then you have like hundreds of options. Because the Delta is a brand new pattern at Sinclair Patterns it'll be 20% off for a week or so. I will leave the date down below because I'm actually not quite sure yet when it ends but at the same time just now an Easter sale started and it's site-wide 25% off the whole site except for this dress. This one's 20% off just because it's a brand new release. I've been making a lot of Sinclair patterns. You'll find a playlist down below that I'll link for you with all my makes so you can get some information. I've always included a lot of sewing footage with each of the garments that I review. So yeah, you can get a lot of inspiration and a little bit of hand holding as well from me. I'll also leave you my general affiliate link so you can just go into the site and browse and also the specific affiliate link for this dress if you'd like to get it for yourself. I do make a small commission if you purchase through these links but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it does support the work that I do here on YouTube. You need light to medium weight fabric with at least 30 to 50 percent stretch horizontally and vertically. You do need neat fabrics that stretch vertically because it is a fitted bodice so you'll be very uncomfortable. Maybe the bodice would even hit a little shorter on your body if the fabric doesn't have that vertical stretch. So make sure you stretch it and check it. The fabrics that are gonna work are the ones that are not so soft, not so floppy and it's all got to do with this neckline design with that short collar you do need a little bit of structure there. So fabrics that are not recommended are ITY, rayon spandex, modal spandex, bamboo spandex, that type of fabric that's just so soft and floppy. It's not going to work really well. What is going to work is a neat crepe, maybe a lighter type of Ponte Roma, a lighter type of scuba fabric, cotton lycra that's a little bit soft not too stiff, <laughs> some French terry. I think rayon French terry would be okay because it's got a little bit more body than the rayon spandex. I think double brush poly is okay, some athletic knits, maybe some stretch velvet if it's got vertical stretch as well. Some stretch velvet only stretches horizontally so make sure you check. You do need some tricot knit interfacing because the layer that goes inside when the short collar folds over, that piece is partially interfaced and that's what gives the short collar its nice structure. And because of the design there is an option for color blocking if you want. You know you can make the dress one color and make the inner piece another so that when the short collar folds over it can be another color. You know, you can do a lot of things. It's, the color blocking is up to you. <laughs> Over the years, I've been doing less color blocking and when I do do it, I try to keep it discreet and just use darker colors and just really discreet. I did want to mention this a little bit. I'll show you a few images here of my fabric. This is an athletic knit. It's super beautiful. It's 90% polyester, 10% spandex, medium weight. It's not too structured. It's not too floppy. You can see there's diverse colors there. The most prominent color there is red. And if I'd had a solid red 
to color block my show color, I would have used that. But the only red I had was just way too dark, it just wasn't gonna match. There's no way I would have chosen the green or the pink. Any color that's just very tertiary in the print, if you try to bring it up with color blocking, it, it won't, it just won't. It'll just look weird from far away, it looks like it's not matching and you'd have to get real up close to see that that color is actually in the print. My rule for me and how I feel good is to choose either the background color or a color that's your safe bet. In this case, I have a bit of dark brown there, so I could have chosen the dark brown, but I think from far away, dark brown and red is not your typical combination. And because there's black there, I thought that is the safe bet. Black, sure color. <laughs> And I did want to do the show color in a different color because I have a print. If I don't do anything different from far away, you won't be able to see the beautiful show color and I want you to see it. Black was a safe choice here and I think is the one that's going to look the best with all the colors here in the print. So my options would have been the exact same red in the dress or black. I think those are always going to work. But that's all just personal styling, personal preference. Colors are always a very personal choice. I'm just sharing my thoughts. Maybe you can think about that. <laughs> Sizes go from 0 to 30 US and that'll go up to a 60 inch bust and a 63 inch hip. Sinclair also has height files. That is the one that you choose first. Based on that, then you go ahead and choose whatever size you are based on the measurements. I think it's really helpful because a lot of fitting adjustments also have to do with your height. So having a height file, I think, just makes the chances of this fitting well a lot greater. <laughs> About the way that this fits, you have zero ease at the bust and the waist. You know, as mentioned everywhere, it is a fitted bodice. It's supposed to be. I don't think you should size up at the bodice. You know, it's just not the look. I think you should measure yourself accurately and choose your size based on the size chart and you'll be okay. It's fine if there's no ease at the bust and waist because we're using a neat fabric that stretches. And a fitted bodice, that's the whole point of the fit and flare, right? Nice fitted bodice. Because the skirt is A-lined from the point where it goes from the waist to the hip, and flares out you have about two or three extra inches around the full hip area as the skirt flares out a little more so considering that there isn't a huge amount of ease at the full hip with this style of skirt I don't think this is a style that you can get away with not blending out at the hips if your hip size is larger than your waist size I think in that case you should blend out to the next hip so that you get the proper fit you don't get an a-line skirt that clings to you that always looks a little funny so I'm just mentioning that if that is your case just be aware I mentioned that there were several lengths and if you want to choose the peplum option it's quite long I measured it it would go to the full hip or even below that so just be aware that it's a longish peplum if I was making a peplum version I would shorten it a little bit just personal preference <laughs> fitting adjustments I always mention what I do and what my sizes are I've just chosen a straight size 16 because that matches my measurements and I've chosen the tall file zero fitting adjustments it's basically print cut out the pattern assemble cut and sew and I always get a really good fit with this brand. It's just like it was made for me, love that. <laughs> I do think the height files play a huge part in this because a lot of fitting adjustments I do with other brands that don't have height files have to do with my height and I'm adding length in places. I don't have to do that here and that is great. I have filmed sewing for you. The pattern is designed to be sewn on the serger, the main seams, although there are some seams that you will have to do at the sewing machine. And the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch, so make sure you're aware. Be careful not to trim away seam allowance when you're serging your pieces together because the quarter of an inch is the seam allowance, so you're not to, meant to be trimming things away. And I'm focusing on the bodice how to put it together and especially how to construct this short collar. I've also devised a way to enclose the princess seams here which is something extra but super easy to do so yeah it's really fun to put together and I think the result was amazing so let's see. This is the center front piece. This is the shape that you always see in a proper show collar. So you see that that's part of the back neckline here. And you have this other piece that is for just for interfacing. The center front piece is gonna be cut four times. So I've cut one of these normal with my print because show collars are folded like that. If you use the inner layer in a contrasting color, you're gonna get the show collar in another color. And that's why I'm using black here as my contrast. So on this inner layer, 
of the center front piece. You do need to interface this partially and that's why we have this other pattern piece. You know, in theory, you would cut this out of interfacing and fuse it on right here. I know this athletic knee is gonna react to my interfacing and shrink this area. So I'm doing like a modified block fusing. I made a mark on the pattern where the interfacing should go. It's a little red line that I can see. I placed it here and with a tracing wheel and paper, I drew a line. This is on the fold. So basically, I just wanna interface all of this area and on this other side as well, I have the mark on the other side too. And then once I have all of that interface, then I'm going to align my piece where that line was. And I'm going to have this area already interfaced, the area that does need to be interfaced. And then I'm going to cut out my piece. Extra work, but I know it's going to be worth it for me. So basically this area here is the one that I want to interface. Here I'm on the ironing board and this is the fold of the fabric here. There is the white line. So that means I need to interface that bit. I've already done the other side. I'm using direct trico interfacing for this because I'm working on a knit so it will give it that structure that you need but it won't make it super stiff like you need when you're working with a woven. So I'm aligning this area here to the white line because that's how I cut the interfacing. I know black is not a good example and it's really hard to see but I do think black was the only contrasting color I could use against my prints for this short color so that's why I'm doing it in black. Okay so you can see the darker black area that is the area that's interfaced that matches this red line that I had on the pattern which is what was supposed to be in face according to this pattern piece but I didn't use the pattern piece so now I'm just going to align this making sure that red line is right on top of my interfaced area right there and that's how I'm going to cut it out I don't have actual pattern weights I just use whatever I find on hand and now I can cut my two layers and this is going to be the inner layer so if you want contrast on your short collar choose something different for the inner center front layer another thing I should mention as I'm cutting you have a grain line mark on this piece it's a small little arrow on the top over there. What I do is I just extend it because then it's much easier for me to measure that grain line to the fold right here to make sure it's even on the top and the bottom to make sure I am putting this on the grain line correctly. It's important to place your pieces with the grain line correct so you don't end up with twisting garments. I always end up cutting these little corners with the scissors, especially as this is not an actual corner, it's like a rounded corner. These are the pattern pieces for the bodice of the delta dress. These two here are for the back. Center back is the only piece cut on the fold. That is the side back piece. That is the side front piece. You can see the shoulder princess seams. And this is the center front. This is the main one, the one that's gonna be on the outside, main fabric, solar print. And the inner layer that I cut out of black athletic knit and it has a section that's interfaced. When the short collar is folded back and on view, this is the fabric that you'll see on the short collar only, but on the rest of the bodice, it'll all be the same print. All these princess seams have at least three little reference marks everywhere, so it's gonna be super easy to put this together. Make sure you mark them well. What I like to do is separate the fronts with the backs, and we're gonna work on the back first. The skirt is just an A-line skirt. I already have my front and my back cut out and pinned on the sides, ready to be sewn. This is just so easy. Surge, hem, and then attach to the bodice. So I'm gonna use a just needle number 90. There are some areas where I'm gonna go through a few layers so that is the one I think is okay. My knee is not too light also. I will be using the sewing machine. I'll use a narrow zigzag. That's a zigzag. Narrow means it's going to be almost flat. So that is almost flat. And here the length of the stitch I'm going to use anywhere from 2.5 to 3. For the main seams I'll use this. If the thickness is increased by a few layers I'll just increase it to 3. Here are the back bodice pieces. I have already pinned on the princess seams. We're just going to sew those with the serger. All along these princess seams, both for the front and the back, you'll see little marks that help you match everything up. And the seam allowance for this dress is only a quarter of an inch, so I'm trying really hard not to trim anything away as I'm sewing these pieces together with the overlocker. After sewing this seam and pressing the seam allowance towards the side, you have a completed shoulder there by sewing the seam. If you are going to sew on some sleeves, then I think it's really important to stabilize that shoulder. I use a narrow strip of non-stretch interfacing to achieve that. And I would do that if I was adding sleeves, but my dress is gonna be sleeveless. So I don't really think you need to stabilize that. There's nothing that's gonna be pulling that seam or weighing it down. So I'm not gonna be stabilizing. These are the two center front pieces for the inner layer outer layer and we need to sew these seams together right sides together quarter of an inch seam allowance i'll be using a narrow zigzag for that and my quarter inch presser foot now i'm sewing the main fabric which has red so i'm using red thread 
when I get to the inner layer that's black, I'll be swapping out my thread. The little seam that we've sewn is just there and I've got the outer layer on top. That's my black contrast layer. Underneath I have my main, the right sides together. What I did now was just align them lengthwise like this. It's gonna be the short collar area. There's a few notches there along the way for you to match that up. And now we're gonna sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Whenever you're sewing two layers together, it's always a good idea to put the one that's stable on the top touching the presser foot. In this case, it's it's the inner layer that has the interfaced edge. The main layer underneath is just your knee. It doesn't have any type of stabilizing. So if you were to put that on the top, the presser foot could go stretching it out as we sew. So remember that interfaced layer on top, non-interfaced layer on the bottom touching the feet dogs. These are pretty long seam, but nothing complex here. Okay, so these layers are sewn together and when we wear the short collar, this is gonna be like that. So what you don't wanna see is the main fabric. We're gonna understitch in a way that's gonna keep the main fabric underneath the short collar. And that means that when you extend this, the seam allowance has to be underneath the main fabric. And if you're using the same for both, it'll be the same thing. You want the seam allowance pointing towards your outer layer your main fabric, whether it's the same or a contrast. That's how we're gonna get a super clean look on the short collar without the main fabric being seen. So I'm just gonna use my blind hand presser foot with the needle to the left to sew this. So I've got my pieces on the ironing board and I'm just pressing everything. It's super neat. Maybe you can see the small amount of black fabric there and that's what the understitching is gonna accomplish. So this is the main fabric and when the short collar falls like this, all you're gonna see is clean black and no main fabric right there on the edge. So that was the whole go. Okay, after pressing that collar and having everything neat, I have gone ahead and pinned my princess seams. So on this side, you can see my princess seam has been pinned to the main layer. The black layer here is the inner layer and it's loose. And in essence, you could just pin all of this together and just sew the three layers together in one go. That is acceptable. But because I have the two layers there, why not enclose the princess seam? And then it would be super neat inside. You might as well if you have the layers. So you can see that on this side, the lining layer is folded in and this princess seam is coming from within the inner and the outer layer. I haven't sewn it properly yet, it's just pins. I'm gonna show you how I achieve that with this other side that's still loose. Basically what you want is just to pin it normal, match up all the little notches along the way, and then just move the seam allowance there towards the center, no pin. Then take this and fold it in like it would be when you want it finished and closed. So fold this inner layer in, then put your hand in here. And with that folded, take these three layers in your hand and this is how you wanna pin it. I'm gonna use the same pin I have there that I had used originally and just match up the three layers there and use the same pin and pin it again. And then I'm just gonna keep going up like this. And as I do this, I'm gonna be flipping the fabric in some way. You can just actually flip it all out, just keeping these layers together, start pushing this fabric and it'll come out. Push it all out and here we got to the top. There we go. So it's gonna look funny, but it's all good. This is the top here where the shoulder seam is and I'm going to align my inner layer on top along the raw edges and I'm gonna keep pinning down using the same pins I had before. <music> look here, you can see the notches that are matching up. That little yellow one with the one underneath. And here we have our funny seam. This is how it looks, don't worry. Once we sew it, we can flip it the other way and we're gonna have our seam enclosed. I'm gonna get this one done and then flip this so that I can do the same on the other side.
there's the seam and now I'm just gonna pull it out like this and voila we have an enclosed princess seam right there that's how it looks like from the right side and on the inside it's just super super neat love it it's an extra step why not so on this side where I had pinned it to show you how it was gonna look I just have to get my hand in there and just pull it out flip it so I can have access to sew this one and it's the same thing that I did and then I'll just flip it the other way around again What I've done here is just do some really quick hand basting to keep all these layers together because now we're going to sew the shoulder seams and the neckline all in one go. You're going to find the dot on the pattern. I've got it marked in yellow right here so you can see it against the black. And this is the back neckline. I've made a little mark at the center back and you also have little dots right there. So we're going to put these right sides together like this. It's easy because there's a center back seam on this collar and that's going to match the center back of the neckline right there. And then this yellow dot is going to match the dot at the back here. These areas are rounded and the whole idea of that is to avoid having to snip. But I think it's going to be necessary anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to align those dots there and then the dots on this other side. There's a dot here and the dot at the back. So that's the back neckline that's going to match exactly. And then this rest here is the shoulder seam. So match it up from here. You're going to match the princess seams front and back. Seam allowances here are going to nest. So the seam allowance on the back is going to the side and the seam allowance enclosed in here is going to the center. So they're not going in the same direction. So coming back to this layer where we have the two layers and that little dot, I think we do need to snip into here to be able to do this. Seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch, so it'll be a tiny little snip and that will allow this to extend. And then we're going to be able to do this neatly right there. So I didn't snip all the way up to the dot, but close enough to match these up again. And now we're going to be able to sew in one go. And that little snip just release the tension right here and it's going to make the seam possible. And I'm going to do the same over here. Just take this pin out, do the little snip. Okay, now we can sew this all in one go, being careful over here and there. For the sake of accuracy, I am going to use a straight stitch here because I'm not going to be able to manage those little corners well with a shallow zigzag. I can see this dot up to where I have to sew and then move the fabric to the other side. Lift, move everything away and keep going here. Okay, here you can see the dot there and how the snip allowed this to happen. And over here, when you look at it, it does look sort of rounded, but there's no pockets. So that is the whole goal right there. And it's neat on both sides. So this basting stitch can come off. And now we can clean this all up with a serger all in one go. After sewing all the shoulder and the neckline, all I did was finish the bodice, side seams right there, press that to the back, and then I just lid my bodice inside my skirt. The back is simple, it matches the side seam to the skirt one to one, but then on the front you have excess on the bodice because it wraps over. You can see it's wrapping over there. I made sure I was wrapping to the side that I want to wrap to, and you'll see these little marks on the pattern, so I knew how much I needed to overlap for my front skirt to end up being the same as the bodice once it's overlapped. And now it's just really simple, a seam on the round, a hem. I've already hand basted that and I'll use a twin needle to do that. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do is finish the binding on the armholes and the dress will be done. If you love this sewing content and it's helping you with your own sewing, don't forget to click on like, like this video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out all the videos that come up here on the channel. This is my Delta dress. I'm so happy with it. I made sure to match right here. <laughs> Red is one of my favorite colors and I'd been holding this print for ages. I think I bought this fabric in 2020 and I was just waiting for the perfect dress for it because even though it is an athletic knit, 
because it's softer and has a little bit of drape, I always thought it was going to be amazing for a fit and flare. I have the same type of fabric here on the short collar, so it's also an athletic knit, the same weight, the same type. I don't want to use something too contrasting, but it is black in there, as you can see. So that's what my choice of color was. You can see there's other colors in there. I think this would have looked hideous if I did a contrasting green, for example. There is a little bit of pink, a little bit of brown, but I don't really think you can see those colors. And I think black was the safest choice and the most classic choice, I think. You know, if you combine with black accessories, it just brings it all together. My black hair as well helps. <laughs> so yeah, this, this was a great choice for me. And here we have princess seams. Really love them. They fit amazing. No changes required. I just sold them and the curve, everything is right where it has to be. And at the back, you also have nice princess seams. The center back is cut on the fold. I think the shaping here on the, on the back is amazing. The length of the bodice is just where it has to be. It's just, just perfect. I didn't have to lengthen or shorten. It's just right. <laughs> and same as here at the front. You can see this area crosses over. So it's like a fake wrap bodice because it's just attached to the single skirt piece right there. The skirt is very simple, my favorite type. I have a twin needle hem there like always. With this type of fabric, never a bad result. And this is a layer that was understitched to help the collar stay put and not have the print showing when you wear it open like this. I think when you put it on, you do need to fiddle and put a pin on the back just to hold it. If I just left it like it is, I would have like a plunging neckline. <laughs> That's not the idea. You know, in the pattern, you just mentioned that you need to find the place and do a little bit of tacking. I don't like usually tacking something permanently. I I'd rather just fiddle with it and use a pin that I can put in and out when I wear the garment. I just like that better. So for now, I've got it loose, but when I wear it, I will pin it right there where it has to be so that I'm comfortable. And you know the business I showed you about enclosing the princess seam? That is totally optional. It's just another step. If if you find that too fiddly, just sew the princess seam to both layers and, and it's fine. It, it'll be acceptable. But because there were two layers there, I thought it was the perfect chance to enclose that seam. And any chance that you can enclose something, it just feels so much better on your skin, especially with a fitted design like this it just feels so good so that's why I showed you how to do that as an extra thing but you could just sew it and just and then you'd have seams like this on the front as well it's acceptable that's how the pattern instructions have you do it I like playing around when I sew and figuring stuff out I love sharing that with you as well let's see it on very simple styling the dress doesn't need much more I mean the dress is already super striking so let's see this is my delta dress from Sinclair patterns I've sewn a straight size 16 with the toe file and I used one of my most precious athletic knits with a print that has red background and a tropical type of situation going on this is a classic fit and flare but with a different type of bodice and you see the details are closer I have the above the knee length option for this a-line skirt and you can see that there is a bodice with a waist seam right there I think it's hitting exactly at my waist both in the front and the back I love that it fits amazingly I had to make no fitting adjustments here I think the tall height file is perfect and here on the top you see what's special and it's this short collar and because I used the print I decided to highlight the short collar by using black contrast so that you can see it it's beautiful there's princess seams that come from the shoulder both in the front and the back and I think the fit is outstanding I really love this dress it's so pretty the bodice is a fake wrap bodice so it's all safe <laughs> I do have a little pin holding it together there at the depth that I like and it's just the best I love a fit and flare and this is a different one because of this beautiful collar feature I think it's really pretty mine is sleeveless if you like sleeves you can also also add sleeves it's part of the pattern as well and I'm very happy with my Delta dress
wish I'd had time to make another one, but I'll give you an idea of what I would make if I'd make a second one. I hope I can get to it at some point. I would like to make that peplum top, but make it a little shorter, so not the full length. And I'd like to make it in a solid sweater knit. I've been really into making awesome sweaters lately. This is perfect. This would just be really nice. I could wear like a fitted black top underneath and just put that on. And I wish I would have had time to make that, but if you can picture it. As usual, my experience with this brand is amazing. I really have to do fitting adjustments. I really make test garments. My confidence is so high that I can just go ahead and make garments and that they're gonna fit, that I'm able to come up and use a really precious fabric right from the get-go, that that is how much I trust how these patterns are gonna fit. And I think that is really relaxing. And remember the Delta, it's 20% off. So I will leave all the information down below when the sale ends. And remember there's also an Easter sale running at the same time. All the other patterns from the site are 25% off. It's just this new one is 20% off. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you like short collars because they're amazing and they don't just have to go on jackets. You can find them on dresses as well and I think they look amazing. You'll see me soon again with more sewing here on this channel. Bye!